Hello humanoids, welcome to Halfling Hobbies. I'm Halfling Hannah, and Eberron is an incredibly diverse world, and each one of its nations embodies that concept. Each one of them has their own culture, their own history, their own feel to the nation. But with 17 different nations and a whole bunch of islands and principalities, it can be extremely difficult for a DM to keep them all straight. Which is why I decided to make a video series on the nations of Eberron. These are going to be a DM's quick guide to the nation, things that are important for you to remember, things to ask your players if they're going to play a character from that nation, and some options for running a session or a full campaign within one of these nations. The first one that we're going to start with is the nation of Sire. This is the nation that brought the centuries-long war to a halt with its tragic story. This nation is also called the Mornland and is perhaps one of the most intriguing of the nations of Eberron. Here we go. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to Halfling Hobbies so you get all of the notifications for all of the videos that I make. Plus, it really helps me out and I would really appreciate it. So, let's talk about Sire. Before we dive into the nation, a quick overview of the world of Eberron. So Eberron is the world as a whole. Within this world, you have one major continent, which is Kovair. Kovair was ruled by Gallifrey for hundreds of years. They kind of conquered the whole nation and the whole thing was Gallifrey. When the king of Gallifrey died, the nation went into civil war over who should succeed him. Sire was the center of all of these things because the capital city of Metrol was the capital city of Gallifrey. Not only was this the seat of kings and queens, it was also the seat of the nation's treasury. It was the capital for art and for culture and for architecture and for all of these different things. And so Sire was extremely important in Gallifrey. It was also the one that was most devastated because of the war. Technically, Sire did have the right to the throne. Their queen at the time was the rightful succeeder of the king. So Sirians do have the moral high ground when it comes to the conversations on the start of the war. However, due to the devastation of their nation, it's kind of a bittersweet argument. So let's talk about Sire in the past. Sire in the past was the capital of the world at the time everything to do with art and beauty was housed in Sire. The capital city had floating gardens and large pillars of stone that shot up into the air, which they built their buildings on. So you had these huge towering buildings. It was absolutely beautiful. Sire was also the seat of House Caneth. House Caneth is the one that holds the maker's mark, not the alcohol, but literally the dragon mark of making. It was here that some of the greatest war machines ever created were made. And it was here that the Warforged were created. The Warforged are a race of sentient, um, magical and mechanical beings. So they're like robots, kind of, except they were created from magical means and not from mechanical means. They do have personality and awareness and they are essentially artificial created beings. They were made in Sire. Sire appreciated all things diverse and they welcomed all types of people, um, all races of individuals and all classes and makes and, and any kind of diversity that you wanted to find, you could find it in Sire. So players could really be from any background, any race, any class, and logically have come from Sire. But sadly, all of this glory, all of this beauty, that's in the past. Because for some unknown reason, a gray mist has covered the entirety of Sire. They call it the Dead Gray Mist. This Dead Gray Mist killed 
the entire inhabitants of Sire, turning them into monstrosities that are unrecognizable. It twisted the landscape and even created sentient uh, magical spells and beams that you can't find anywhere else and are very unsettling. Many people did escape from this dead gray mist. Most of them were soldiers who were on the front lines fighting with the nations around them or those that were in other countries diplomatically at the time. Some higher level people did escape from the center of the city using magical means such as teleportation. One of these people being the crowned prince, who now is in Breland, uh, reigning over a refugee camp of Sirenians. No one knows exactly what caused this dead gray mist, though there are some theories. Some say that Sire was experimenting with a new war machine that would have brought the entire world to its knees, and the research got out of hand, creating this mist that engulfed the entire land. Others say that it was an attack by another nation, and still others say that it was condemnation from the gods for creating life. Whatever the cause of this mist, it has spread throughout the entire nation and stopped at the borders of Sire. It seems stable, at least for now, though the nations around Sire all live in fear that at any moment that mist might spread, creating kind of a dead zone um, between the nations and Sire itself as sort of like a buffer. Because there are no inhabitants in the actual Mornlands anymore, the cataclysmic event of this dead gray mist engulfing all of Sire is known as the Morning. And so Sire now is known as the Mornlands. And because no one inhabits the Mornlands, all of the rich and amazing treasures that Sire once held are still there in the Mornlands. Salvagers and scavengers dream of finding a way to get into the Mornlands and find the treasury of Gallifrey, or these art collections and museums, or the House of Caneth itself with its massive vaults below ground, still housing those wonderful war machines. Currently, the Mornlands is home to only a group of some warforged, led by the Lord of Blades. The Lord of Blades believes that this land rightfully belongs to the Warforged, and some fear that the Lord of Blades is gathering a whole army of Warforged to march under his ideals. So some things to consider if you have a player that wants to play a character that is from Sire. The Morning has an extreme effect on all characters from Sire, whether they were in the nation at the time or outside of it. You need to ask your player where they were during the morning. Were they in Sire itself? If so, how did they escape? If they were outside, did someone that they love not make it out or are they still trying to find them? If your player wants to play a Warforged, you have some special considerations. Warforged are from Sire. And so the question is, were they in Sire at the time of the morning? It is possible for Warforged to have been in the morning and have come out of it, experiencing everything that happened during that time. Does it haunt them? Does it bother them? Remember, Warforged were created specifically for the purpose of war, and now that that war has ended, they're gonna have some special considerations just for that, such as what is their purpose now? Perhaps they are hoping to align with the Lord of Blades, or perhaps they are just trying to find something that gives them purpose and meaning. Players from Sire also could be spread out anywhere in the world at this point, but wherever they are, they have to make one decision. Do they support the crown prince of Sire and his dream to retake and reclaim Sire or to carve out a, per a portion of the world to become Sire again? Or do they want to leave all of that in the past and forget about it and simply live their life somewhere else in the world? This consideration is very important politically in the world, as the Prince of Sire and all of the other nations have a little bit of tension, especially in Breland. Your player from Sire is also going to want to decide how much they want to flaunt their heritage. While most places are pretty kind towards Sirenians as they have lost everything and are willing to accept them into their culture, 
There are those nations who fear Cyrenians that they are trying to take land back to create a new sire. So this can create some tensions between NPCs and a Cyrenian player. So the question is, how much of that heritage and culture do they want to showcase? Many people still wear Cyrenian style clothing. So the Cyrenian style was to be very flamboyant, very brightly colored, as they were the seat of wealth and culture and art. And so they have a very distinctive style to their clothing. The new trend in this is to have the Cyrenian style cut to the clothing, but instead to wear it in all black. This is called morning wear. What does your player want to do? Do they want that colorful and flamboyant? Do they want that national pride that says, I am still Cyrenian? Or are they in mourning for their nation? Or are they trying to move away from their nation entirely and don't want people to know that they're from Sire? So as an overview, here are some questions to ask your players if they want to play a character that is from the Mornlands. What have you lost? Is it family? Is it uh, your whole squadron? Perhaps if they were a soldier, their whole squadron was taken by the mist and yet somehow they survived. Perhaps it is an heirloom or an artifact that is left at the family home that they're hoping maybe they can go in and find. Or perhaps it's a person that they don't know if they survived or not and they're trying desperately to find them. Do you dream of reclaiming that which was lost? Or are you trying to move away from it and forget it? What do you hold on to? People who have lost everything often have at least one thing that they cling to that reminds them of their home. Is it an heirloom? Is it a wand? Is it an arcane focus of some kind? Is it perhaps a tradition from Sire that you make sure to hold on to that you don't want to die out? Whatever it is, what are you holding on to tightly that you value more than anything that reminds you of home? Were you a part of the morning and it gave you powers that you don't understand? And finally, what drives you? Do you want to reclaim your home? Do you want to make a new one? Do you want to forget the horrors of the past? Do you want desperately to find out what caused the morning and set it right? Do you want to perhaps see if there is a way to reverse it and bring everyone back? What is it that drives your character above all else? Finally, let's talk about some of the cities of Sire that are still intact, though encompassed in this gray mist. Eston. This was the seat of House Caneth and the place that most salvagers are dreaming of getting to. This is where all the war machines would have been. This is where creations of arcane and technological nature would have been housed. And to be able to get to the vaults of House Caneth would be an incredible experience for any player. Next up, we have Metrol. Metrol was the capital city, and some say the source of the gray mist. If your players are looking to investigate the source of the dead gray mist, it's likely they're gonna have to go to Metrol. Metrol is a sprawling metropolis filled with beautiful architecture, art, um, riches of all kinds that now lie silent and empty in the dead gray mist. And finally, Seaside. Seaside was a popular vacation resort, a place of quiet tranquility that most Cyrenians hold in their hearts as a reminder of what Sire was really about. It's not the biggest place in the world and it certainly wasn't the most well-known, but it was very popular for Cyrenians and most of them still remember it very fondly. So Sire, a a very sad story of a nation that had everything, that had the art, the culture, the beauty, the riches, and perhaps strove just a little too far and created something that destroyed everything that they had. Whatever it is in your campaign, the Mornlands are sure to play a big, big role. You can create so many interesting things with the Mornlands, uh, just from character backstories as well as plot hooks. Perhaps your entire campaign centers around the morning itself, figuring out what caused it and stopping it from spreading any further. 
perhaps the start of your campaign is actually that the Mornlands has begin, begun to expand and it, the nations around it are becoming desperate, trying to leave um, before it spreads even further. And nobody knows when it's going to expand. Perhaps your campaign starts with a second morning another nation being taken over by this dead gray mist and your players having to figure out what is responsible for this and maybe try and find a way to reverse all of the effects. You can also run smaller side quests and side plots within the Mornlands. This can be either for a PC backstory or for an NPC side quest. Perhaps there is a piece of research that a Cyrenian scientist had to leave behind when they were fleeing the dead gray mist that they desperately need in order to create new sire. Or perhaps your party comes across a Cyrenian refugee who begs them to go and find their missing spouse and to bring back their wedding ring so at least they can have some closure. Whatever you decide to do with Sire, there is a whole world of possibilities, both interesting and terrifying. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for even more incredible adventures in Sire and more campaign options for running plots and side quests within the Mornlands. Until next time, my friends, may your game have advantage. Kathleen Hannah here, signing out.